All right, everyone, today I will reveal the insurance stock that I am buying in my personal dividend stock portfolio. This is stock number 40. Literally, I have spent weeks thinking about this, looking at annual reports, agonizing over the numbers, and I'll tell you this was a very difficult decision, but I was able to do it. I'm gonna share with you today the stock analysis methodology that I personally used to pick to pick the precise stock, the insurance stock, that I want in my personal stock portfolio, my dividend stock portfolio, now at 40 positions as soon as I make the trade to purchase the winner. So let's get started. All right, everyone, so if you watched my last video, I will link to it in the description below you know that I'm looking at a bunch of insurance stocks. And I shared some high-level macro views on the insurance market there, so I'm not going to repeat myself. But the one thing I do want to repeat is I've been very biased going into this in terms of buying a P&C, a property and casualty insurance company, specifically one that really focuses on the property, the real estate side of things. I wanted to buy an insurance company that focuses on insuring real assets, real estate. And the reason for that is I believe that is an insurance product that's really not going to be disrupted. It's one that's going to be around forever because a lot of people own a lot of real estate, a lot of people, corporations, entities, and they need to insure that real estate, whether it's just for their own peace of mind or whether it's for um, satisfying the conditions of a mortgage that they may have against that real estate. So anyways, I looked at a bunch of companies. Um, I originally was um, quite focused on Chubb and Travelers, although there are two others that I added to the mix, uh, First American Financial and Prudential. The reason I added First American Financial is I wasn't really thinking about title companies in the last video, but a subscriber mentioned, hey, Ian, you really ought to look at title companies. And that's a good point because anyone who is transacting in real estate needs title insurance for the real estate that they are buying. And um, there are different types of title policies. There's title policies for the buyer, but there's also title policies that protect lenders as well. And so these title companies, they have a constant stream of business from people and corporations, entities buying real estate, but also from the lenders that are lending to those entities. Moreover, these um, title companies have a lot of business, even when someone refinances a property, updating the title insurance is required. And so I looked at First American Financial, that's a title company that working in the real estate industry, I have some experience with, and so they have a, a pedigree. One thing that I'll say is, for better or worse, I will only invest in companies that I know of, that they have a brand name, that I've heard of them, that I respect. And so the, um, the challenge with some of these is there's a whole laundry list of insurance companies out there, but some of them I've not heard of before. I don't have any uh, necessarily, not even firsthand experience, but I just haven't heard of them. Typically those are the types of companies I'm just not going to analyze quite as closely because I'm investing for the long term. I wanna buy and hold forever. I need some kind of attachment to the equities that I'm purchasing. And so I like to purchase equities that I've heard of before. Anyways, um, I added Prudential to the list as well. Reason I added Prudential is they have a really good starting yield. And in terms of a price to book value, they're trading at a discount as compared to a lot of other insurance companies out there. So as someone who invests for dividend and cash flow, I really like the fact that Prudential has a high starting yield. And so I added them to the mix. I'm gonna get right to it. I cut First American Financial and Prudential right off of my list. Uh, and not, not very quickly, it actually took quite a bit of analysis, but with First American, I like their business. The dividend is growing really quickly. It, all the numbers match up, they look good, but ultimately what I decided is I don't want exposure to a title company right now, and I don't want exposure to a home warranty company as well. Uh, First American sells home warranties in addition to the title insurance. They have some other lines of business as well, just from personal experience, I don't really believe in, in these home warranties. I don't know if you've purchased a home warranty before, but in general, for myself at least, um, in terms of purchasing real estate, I don't believe that the home warranty offers a ton of value. And so for that reason, I didn't really want to invest in, in a company that sells home warranties. I'm not saying 
it's a poor product or it might not make sense for other consumers out there. I'm just saying for myself, I'm not big on home warranties. Nothing wrong with it, but again, it's not for me. But um, also title insurance, I just didn't want to have exposure to title insurance, mainly because it's cyclical. It's going to do very well in a good real estate market when there's lots of transactions happening lots of refinancing happening. But right now the real estate market is starting to taper off a bit and refinancing is starting to taper off because interest rates are going up. And so I foresee that that part of their business might be a little bit sluggish in the near term future. Of course I invest forever, but maybe I'll take a look at First American if the, if the economy takes a turn down and it comes on deep discount at some point, maybe I'll take a second look at it. Right now, not for me. Prudential, ultimately, I had some difficulties analyzing this company. They have their hands in so many different businesses that going through their 10K is pretty, um, pretty um, messy in my opinion. They're in asset management, they're in annuities, they're in life insurance, they're in other lines of business. They even provide uh, group health and uh, corporate benefits um, to, to corporations. And so there's a lot going on, on on the corporate side of things. And then there was like a line item on their 10K that was like other, and it always showed like a loss each year. And I really couldn't figure out this other bucket, why that line of business was always losing money. And so anyways, ultimately I want to peer play. There's too much going on there. I think Warren Buffett uh, said it really well when you really ought to understand a company before investing in it. I couldn't get to the bottom of Prudential. Doesn't mean I won't one day. Doesn't mean maybe one day I will own it. But right now it's not for me. I just want an easy to understand company, a peer play right now. And quite frankly, easy to understand in the insurance space is levels of magnitude more difficult than my bread and butter stocks, which are consumer non-cyclicals. And so that's something to take home as well is I'm pretty new to this stuff. And I'm still learning when it comes to insurance. And I'll tell you, insurance, I have a new level of respect for people who are really good at insurance stocks, who analyze them all the time. Going into it, I thought it was kind of boring coming out of it. I think it's really exciting, to be honest. It's kind of um, just really exciting to learn some new things about investing and how the insurance market is a little bit different than some of the other companies I invest in like um, most of my consumer non-cyclical brand name stocks. Anyways, Prudential, a little bit too confusing for me, so I was left with Chubb and Travelers. And I will tell you, these two big brand name companies, I've heard of them, I like them, they're in the market I wanna be in, great uh, metrics. It was, there were times when I wanted to buy Travelers, there were times when I wanted to buy Chubb, it went back and forth, back and forth. So at the end of this analysis, I will share with you the one I'm buying, but it was tough, it was tough to come to a decision. And ultimately, here's how I did it. I mined through the data. So one thing to keep in mind is I focused on the 2017 annual report I'm a really long-term investor, and so looking at shorter-term data, it doesn't really matter as much to me. I like to look at annual reports because I like to look at all the history over time, and the 2018 annual reports, they're not out yet. So I was just mainly looking at 2017, which works really well for me. So first thing I looked at was uh, book value. So book value in the insurance space is important because when one is buying an insurance company, they're buying the, um, the assets, they're buying the assets of that company. And insurance companies, they have um, assets and liabilities um, just as any other company, but it's kind of like a bank stock. When analyzing an insurance company, it's important to look at book value. By contrast, book value, I don't think it really matters for a lot of the consumer non-cyclicals that I own because they're real asset light because they pay out all their cash as they earn it and they don't have a lot of assets on hand. But insurance companies surely do. They have the float. They have all these premiums that have been paid and um, they haven't had to pay out losses on them yet. So they take that float, they invest it. So they have a lot of assets. And when one is buying an insurance company, they're buying into those assets. And so I want to buy an insurance company that is uh, as low of a price to book as possible. And Chubb was, um, it's at a 1.19 price to book, Travelers 1.43, both reasonably low. Would it be nicer if the, they were closer to trading towards a one-time book value? Yeah, that would be nicer, but I would say here maybe Chubb wins a little bit, but again, this book value is based on 2017. It has changed since then. So the way I took this is they're both at a reasonable price to book. Surely if these were close to like a two, that would be ridiculous. It'd be way too high to pay for an insurance company. Combined ratio. So combined ratio is a metric that is really important when analyzing insurance companies. 
I mentioned this a bit in my last video, but basically a combined ratio below one is really good. A combined ratio above one, not as good. Lower the combined ratio, the better. What combined ratio basically measures is um, claims going out divided by premiums coming in. And so if a combined ratio is lower than one, it means that the company is making a profit, not even looking at the float and investment income on the float. They're making money simply by having um, premiums coming in higher than claims going out. And so combined ratio for Chubb is really low. It's at 94%, 94.7, 88.7 the year before. Traveler is 97.9 versus 92 the year before. When you look at both of these companies, combined ratio is really good, but Chubb, I put a star next to it because this is really uh, industry leading. This is about the best combined ratio I could find out of any insurance company. Now, it may be the fact that they're a pure play. They're very much a pure play in physical real estate property insurance, whereas Travelers does have some other lines of business, including um, auto, in fact, whereas a Chubb, by the way, also has life, but it's kind of small. And so Chubb, it may be that their combined ratio is really good because it's just characteristic of the industry they're in in that pure play position. But it also may be that they have pricing power. They have pricing power because their product is great and uh, the, um, the company is really well known. In any event, I like having the low combined ratio. A lot of insurance companies recently have had combined ratios at 100% or even higher because there have been a lot of catastrophic losses in the last few years due to global events such as fires and hurricanes and things like that. Now, um, combined ratio, again, really love it for Chubb. However, return on equity, different story told here. Return on equity is the um, net income divided by stockholders' equity. It's really a measure for a bank stock or an insurance company of how well the company is doing in terms of turning a profit on our money, on the shareholders' equity. And the return on equity here for Chubb is a 7.5%. It was 9.8% the year before. For Travelers, it's 9% and 13% the year before. So consistently what I saw was on combined ratio, Chubb has been winning very well, very, very well. But on return on equity, Travelers has been winning. And so, as you can see, I've been going through these numbers and I've been bouncing back and forth. Oh, I want Chubb. No, I want Travelers. And it's been really tough because they each excel in different areas. But I love the return on equity on Travelers. Now, looking here, I want a company that is growing. Both of these companies are growing. They are signing up new business. They are bringing in new premiums. And I think that's really important. I don't want to invest in an insurance company that is stagnant or declining. I want a growth company. And Chubb was kind of hard to analyze, difficult to analyze, because they are part of this acquisition. Chubb and Ace Limited uh, combined forces merged a few years back. And so what I had to do to get Chubb's premium growth rate is I, for the last five years, is I looked at the pre-acquisition, post-acquisition, and then I blended them together. Chubb and Travelers, believe it or not, based on my analysis over the last five years, roughly have the similar premium growth rate. They're both growing premiums at about 13% over the last uh, five years. And so I like the fact that uh, more premiums are coming in, higher premiums are coming in, they're growing the premiums, they're growing the revenue. Both of them doing a great, uh, great job at that. So looking at revenue, by the way, I didn't write down the specific numbers here, but I wanted to see a company that's growing the revenue each and every year or most years, and it's on an upward ascendancy. Both of these, I have an up arrow here because both of them have been growing the revenue just fine. Earnings, I'll tell you, this is really for the most recent year. Earnings for both of these companies are down for the year of 2017 versus the prior year, and quite frankly, versus the prior few years. The reason earnings are lower is there have been some catastrophic losses the last few years with a spike in just global, global events, global events such as fires and hurricanes. And so... Quite frankly, that is a theme that I think will continue to plague property and casualty insurers because we're in a world now where it seems at least that these types of events are on an uptick. Perhaps it's just a blip on the long-term um, spectrum, but I, um, I certainly believe based on the last few years at least, it seems like these things are on the uptick, but maybe we'll get a few years going forward where they're on a decline. We shall see, but I think that's one of the biggest risks with PNC insurers, and the only way to compensate for that over the long run is going to be keep um, increasing 
uh, premiums if, if the companies are able to push through those increases. But I know that's difficult as well because it's a very uh, competitive market. A lot of these products are sold through brokers. And in the broker channel, they're just going to bring the best uh, priced product to the uh, end consumer, the end buyer, the corporation or the individual. And so it's tough. But anyway, something to look at. Margin. I look just at the uh, net margins here. Uh, and the net margin uh, for Chubb was 12%, 13% the year before. Travelers, 7%, 11% the year before. So I see, again, each one excels in different things, but Chubb really excels here on the margins. In fact, I, I saw Chubb's margins even more recently. I think they were even better than this. But again, I'm just going on annual reports. And um, I just really like a company that has strong margins. It's more defensible. In my opinion, any company in, within its peer set, if it has a higher margin, that's always a good thing. Float. Um, we talked about float a little bit in my last uh, video. These insurance companies, they bring in all these premiums, but um, they don't have to just pay out claims right away. What happens is uh, people are paying premiums and the whole point of insurance, pay these premiums. Well, hopefully you never need your insurance, but one day if you do, you file a claim, they pay it out. In the interim, what happens is these companies have what's called float. They have all this money um, on their balance sheet. And what they do with the float is they invest the float. Most of these companies invest it very conservatively. They typically buy bonds. One of the reasons these companies could do a little bit better in the upcoming years is if interest rates increase, bonds um, will have better yields. These companies can do a better job uh, returning uh, or earning an investment income on the float. Anyways, what I did is I just looked what kind of percentage return are these two getting on the float. Uh, Chubb was 3.05%. Travelers was 3.31%. So Travelers is getting quite a bit uh, better return on the float. I think they're probably taking a little bit more risk than Chubb. I think Chubb is really conservative with their float. Travelers is a little more aggressive. Nothing like the kind of investments I even discuss here. I think dividend investing in the spectrum of investing is pretty conservative. These guys aren't doing dividend investing. These guys are literally buying bonds, government bonds, corporate bonds. They're buying very predictable investments. And so they're getting a little more aggressive at Travelers, which I actually like. I would say Travelers is doing a better job here, earning a return on the float. And I think the return that these companies enjoy on a float is really important because over time, let's say the combined ratios kind of Hopefully, hopefully Chubb can, can have their industry-leading combined ratio going out in the future. But let's say business gets competitive. Let's say they have to fight on premiums. They have to, some of these companies have to have lower premiums to win business. If these combined ratios, let's say they all revert to one, where are the companies going to differentiate? Which company is going to do the best? It's going to be the one that earns the most income on the float. And so Travelers is doing better on the float. Chubb is doing better on the combined ratio. Net, net, Chubb is doing better from a margin standpoint because they have better margins. But I thought that was really interesting that Travelers has a fabulous investment return. Price per share, 131 for Chubb, 124 for Travelers. The current yield. So the dividend yield on these stocks in the short run, all of them uh, are really low. Not Prudential, but, uh, not First American, but I'm talking about Chubb and Travelers. 2.22% for Chubb, 2.47% for Travelers. Now, the uh, dividend growth rate is uh, reasonably good on these. Uh, Chubb is 10.7% compound annual growth rate over the last five years. Travelers, 9.0. So that being said, I'll tell you, when I look at Chubb in the last few years, the dividend growth has slowed. I think a lot of that's part of this ACE acquisition. I think it could bump up again. I still think the five-year compound annual growth rate is reasonable to look at. At least these companies are growing the dividend quickly, 10.7 and a nine, but the starting yields are really low. Basically, when I modeled this out, the yield on cost to be really compelling for these stocks, buying them now, I'm looking 20 years out. I'm not looking five years out, not looking 10 years out. I'm literally looking 20 years out. And so, I want an insurance company in my portfolio for the diversification. I have very limited exposure to financials. If you've seen my complete stock portfolio, you know that. If you have not, check out a link in the description below. You can download my complete stock portfolio in Excel. Does not include the new stock yet because I still have to buy it either today or tomorrow, but um, I will soon have 40. The one you download will have 39. Anyways, 
I already have a good mix of stocks, but I don't have much exposure to finance. I have a few banks. I have none to insurance. And so I want to go into insurance here. I want it for the diversification. I want quality. I'm willing to take quality over yield. And I just have to be realistic with myself. The starting yields are low. The growth rates are good. That being said, the starting yields are so low that even with these fabulous growth rates, if they can hold up, I'm looking 20 years out to see a really good yield on cost. I'm willing to do that because this stock will likely not be more than 1% of my portfolio, probably closer to like a 0.9%, 0.8% of my portfolio. All right, so moving on, payout ratios are really good. Chubb is 31.13, Traveler is 27.82. They've got a lot of room to increase the dividend, even if the companies don't grow. Love it. Uh, market caps, Chubb is uh, 60 billion, 32 for Travelers. I like that. I, I would say both are really good sizes. I give Chubb a star because I think in this world where so much can go wrong <laughs> with an insurance company, that's the business they're in. They're in the business of taking on risk and helping people, their clients, manage risk. Size and scale is usually a good thing. Chubb, in fact, is the largest peer play, property and casualty, real estate focused uh, insurer that is publicly traded in the world. Uh, what else? International. Chubb has a good portion of their business, not more than half. It was like a, I'd say roughly one third, if I recall correctly, international. Travelers had very low international exposure. I think just in Canada, primarily very low. And so I gave Chubb a plus, Travelers a minus. Uh, shareholders equity. Travelers wasn't really growing shareholders equity over the last few years. Chubb is growing. I would say shareholders equity growing over, over time is very important for a financial company, for an insurance company. I give Chubb a star there. Uh, property and casualty, pure play. Chubb, I give it a star. Travelers, I don't. Reason is travelers, I started looking into their business. They do a lot of stuff. They are in auto. They got, they got other stuff going on. I don't even remember all the lines they're in, but they're more diversified. Chubb is more of a pure play. I like a pure play. I like the margins that come with it, the combined ratio that comes with it. Um, and then I would say ACE uh, or acquisitions. One thing I read in the insurance market is acquisitions are generally risky. You generally want to stay away from acquisitions or wait for them to play out. This ACE acquisition happened a few years ago. And so that's kind of a negative. I would say Travelers wins there because it's been more steady eddy, no acquisitions. Chubb has had uh, a merger and so that is a potential risk. We need to see how it plays out. It seems like the acquisition has been really beneficial because it allows the company to approach mid-market and, um, and all, all markets, small market, mid-market, and premier um, market, I guess, I don't know what you'd call it, premier tier of, of properties and businesses out there. But um, Chubb basically insures all different types of properties. And from what I've read, there's very few companies that can do this, that can work with individuals that can work with high net worth people that can work with small businesses medium businesses large businesses that own skyscrapers it works with everyone and so that's something good and I, my understanding is ace really allowed them that acquisition or the merger rather I think ace bought chubb uh, merger um, that really allowed them to become this diversified company across all different types of properties and so Ultimately, what did I go with? You guys guess. It's probably at this point a lot easier to see than when I was going through it. When I was going through it, literally bouncing back and forth, back and forth. I'll tell you at the meetup we just had, we just had a PPCE and meetup in San Francisco. Check out my Instagram. I'll link in the description below. You can see a, a picture from it. I'll have more of these. Love these meetups. I was talking to one of my uh, buddies there and I mentioned, hey, I'm probably going to buy Travelers. Well, look, I finally finished my analysis. I'm telling you, hours of agonizing over it. There's more I did, but I've got to summarize it here. I went with Chubb. I'm doing Chubb, uh, ticker symbol CB. So in terms of full disclosure, I am about to be long on Chubb, ticker symbol CB. I'll be buying that within the next 48 hours. Now, I'll tell you, I didn't list it here, but uh, the PE ratios on both of these, I did like a forward PE. I just looked at analyst estimates for 2018. Did, a, did a, like a forward PE on the 2018 year for both of these. PEs aren't great for either of them. And so what I'd say is I'm buying these businesses at a fair value. I'm not buying them at a discount. I'm buying them at, uh, buying Chubb at a low starting yield. I don't think it's a great um, buying opportunity or anything 
For me, this is more of a diversification play. If you've seen my portfolio, I don't have exposure to finance. I almost bought Aflac years ago. I don't want to buy Aflac now. I don't want to be in the health space, but I like Aflac. I respect Aflac. A lot of folks in the dividend community have done so well with it. I regret not buying it like five to seven years ago when I was looking at it, but so be it. Now it's time for me to finally get into insurance. I'm doing it. And I'm going to, the way I'm going to get into Chubb is I'm going to take a really small purchase up front and then I'm just going to average in over time because it's not on sale now. It's definitely not on sale. It's just at a fair value. It's a pure diversification play for me. I'll cap it probably, like I said, at 0.8, 0.9% of the dividend stock portfolio. What unknown for me is taxes, tax situation with this. So Chubb is a weird entity. It is set up as Chubb Limited. It is based out of Switzerland. And my understanding is um, it's an S&P 500 component. It's traded on the uh, NYSE as ticker symbol CB. I don't know how taxes work with this. Basically, I don't know if there are foreign tax withholdings or not. I will see it tax time. I tried to research it a little bit. I did not call investor relations. I kind of, um, it, it's not a deciding factor for me at the end of the day. At the end of the day for me, on this one, it's all about, or on all of them, actually, but um, it, it's about quality, and quality will, will trump um, tax situations. But um, what may happen with this, I just don't know, is if it's treated like some of my other foreign stocks, there may be a foreign tax withholding taken out of each dividend, but I can claim it back as a credit on my tax return. I already know how to do this. My accountant already knows how to do this, my tax advisor, and... Um, I have to do this actually with some of my other holdings as well. And so I'm prepared for that if that comes up, but I just don't know how Chubb will work. If you own Chubb, please comment um, in, the, in the comments below what your experience has been with the combined company Chubb and Ace and how the taxes work. Is there any foreign withholding on the dividends? I'd be curious. That is something I don't know yet, but I will know come tax time. Hey, thank you everyone for hanging in there. This has been a subscriber question for such a long time. I know you guys have been waiting. I started talking about insurance back in like mid-2018. It took me this long to figure it out. But that's part of the moral here today. I've been investing for over 20 years. I am new to insurance. I am proud of myself, quite frankly, for learning some new stuff. That's the great thing about investing. You're always learning and you always got to be humble. Like, I don't know everything about investing, especially the insurance market. I want to thank some of the subscribers out there. There are some subscribers who are really heavy in the insurance space. They love insurance. People sending me research reports, people sending me stocks, all kinds of great comments and feedback. Thank you guys, you guys are awesome. And so I, I did go through all those research reports and everything, and it's very helpful. And I appreciate that. And that's the part, that's the point of this community is we are dividend investors supporting other dividend investors. And um, we're all just trying to stay humble here because that's how you gotta be investing. You always are learning new things in investing. And ultimately from a thug standpoint, I just wanted to have an insurance company in my portfolio because Warren Buffett has done so well with insurance. He loves insurance. I am gaining a new appreciation for insurance after going through this analysis. And I can see why Warren Buffett likes insurance so much. So from a thug life perspective, I am so excited to now have an insurance company, Chubb, that I'm adding to my dividend stock portfolio. If you enjoyed the video today, I want to ask you to kindly leave a thumbs up, a comment, a subscription. All of that means the world to me. It's the best way that you can thank me. In terms of full disclosure, I will be in initiating and buying a position in Chubb, ticker symbol CB, in the next 48 hours. In terms of a friendly disclaimer, today's video is not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. This video is just for your fun and entertainment. If you're going to go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult a licensed financial advisor first. Literally just sharing my journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. All right, everyone, here it is. Share your comments below. Can't wait to hear what you think about Chubb, about insurance what you think about financial stocks in general. Let's have a great discussion below, and I will see you in the next Dividend Investing video.